All right, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand. I mean, we might just name her obedience. You know what I'm talking about? Just make sure, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you just never know. You know what I'm saying? Make sure her butt don't darn disobey. Oh, whoop that darn butt still. Nobody gets past. Don't nobody get a darn pass. And me? I whoop my girl. But you? In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the walk and the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Hey! Azariah! Y'all be quiet back there. All right, let's get to it. Let's, uh, you know what I mean? What you got on your heart? Well, I'm sleepy. I feel like I just woke up. Your butt did just wake up. No, I didn't. You don't start getting active until 11.30 in the darn day. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. I woke up at 8 every morning. That's a lot. My wife already told me. Uh, uh, today. No, I know. She already told me. She already snitched on y'all. Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock. Yeah, okay. No, 7.30. I get mm -hmm. 7 7.30. Yeah, for work. Yeah. No, okay. Hi. Uh, Azariah, Eli, Zahar. Who else? That's it. Come here. What we got now? Oh, I'm so screwed. I was just talking about that about when, uh, when he, uh, he, he get life and he also uh, take life. Yeah. 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 Let's just read it though. Deuteronomy 32. Oh. All right, let's do it. Deuteronomy 32. TJ, give me a number. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 12. Let's get it. Let's see what it's talking about. It's all right. Stand over here for me. Just need to talk to y'all. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 12. Now, you know what we're doing right now. What are we doing? Bible study. Okay, so if we're doing that every week, I say the same thing, right? What do I say? To be quiet. Okay, so why do I have to find myself saying that every single week? So why are you too loud every week? Ezri? <laughs> hmm? I need you to be the leader. This is your house. That's your room. Your games. Your toys. So that means that when you playing with your stuff and your cousins are playing with you, I need you to represent what we expect. Otherwise, I'm getting your butt. Do you understand? I need y'all to be quiet. That's right. I need y'all to be quiet. Eli. I'm being quiet. I appreciate you. All right, y'all go. Y'all can play in downstairs. Y'all can play in the room. But whatever y'all play, be quiet. If I hear y'all again, then y'all coming in here and y'all sitting down and y'all gonna listen with everybody else. Understand? Yeah. All right. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 12. Is that what we said? Yeah. Let's see what the book says. So the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He did he made him, yeah. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, uh -huh. and oil out of the flinty rock. Who are you talking about, Jeshurun? Yeah. Let's hear about it. Butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou did think... And thou did drink the pure blood of the great. All right, this is all the what, the, what what do we call this? What do we call this? What are we reading right now? What do we call this? I mean, it's a song, but what do we call this type of, of, of writing? It's like a song, like a poetry. Yeah, poetry. What else would we call it? What would the book call it? Poem. Start with a P, right? Song. No, not song. Proverb. It's a proverb, right? Or a parable, right? These are, he's not talking about yeah. literal things. Yeah. 
he's given a picture to describe, to give us a parable, something to compare it to of how he treated us as a people, right? So he's making the people an individual, right? Then he's saying, man, I brought the milk out for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you had, he just trying to tell you, you had it all, right? He painted a picture to kind of let her know you had it all, right? Let's see, keep going. But Jesse Run waxed fat and kicked. Look, Jesse Run, he waxed, he waxed fat and he what? And kicked. That boy was rebellious. He said he kicked. Kind of think of a donkey. You know what I'm saying? You remember Balaam? We read about Balaam. You know what I'm saying? The Balaam, kept, you know what I'm saying? The, the donkey kept on going to the side. Sometimes when donkeys get rebellious, they kick. Horses too, they kick. It was a video they showed on Facebook. Poor darn kicked this woman in her darn chest. She went darn fly. I was like, goodness gracious, that thing must have hurt. Right? But you look at it, that's what, that's what rebellious animals do. So that's what he's looking at. He's saying, Jeshurun, which is us as a people, right? He's talking about, he's combining all of us and making us one person that's named Jeshurun. He's saying, Jeshurun, he kicked. That means he rebelled. Let's see. Thou art wax fat, thou art grown thick. Mm -hmm. You are covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Mm -hmm. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. Mm -hmm. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. Look what the book say. They sacrificed unto what? Devils. So what do you think these people doing when they worship in these other gods? You get to Islam, right? Islam, they got this thing where they say it's no, they kind of like us, right? They kind of like us. They they say no idolatry too, right? That book, right? If you look at that, they book, you know what I'm saying? Not just our, but that they book, no idolatry. You look at they stuff, it say no idolatry, right? But every year, you got something called Ramadan? Uh, Ramadan. Ramadan? Did this Ramadan. Ramadan. Huh? The Ramada. Ramadan. Right? They got something called Ramadan. Right? And you know what they do, Ramadan? Who know what they do, Ramadan? Fasting. Huh? They fast. Fast, they fast. Yeah. Right? What else they do? Mm -hmm. They pray to what direction? East. Oh, that's right. And then, I think Ramadan, maybe it's a different event, but then they also make a yearly pilgrimage, is what they call it. A journey. To Saudi Arabia. Y'all ever heard of that? Mm -mm. Nope. Every year they gotta go to Saudi Saudi Arabia. I mean, if you a real one, you know, if you a real one, kind of like our kind of like our law, where three times a year we would have to appear in, in the place of the Most High God chose. They had that, but this one time, as far as I know, it's one time a year for them, right? And they go to the place where they God chose. And in this place, what they claim is that Abraham built a well. And in this place, they got this box. You know what I'm saying? Got like this box. It's like a box. The inside of the box is like this little thing. You know what I'm saying? Like a little metal looking thing or whatever. And they go and they rub the little thing, put their face in the little thing, and keep moving or whatever. What do you think that is? I mean, I wish, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get us a TV right here or something. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could show it to you. You know what I'm saying? But what? It's a, I mean, a black. You know what I'm saying? It's like a small little house, like a little temple. You know, they're just black and they walk around it and they go around it like this and walk around it. And then they all, you know what I'm saying? When they get a chance, they go up and touch the walls or touch the little thing that's on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Pray to it, do whatever they do. What do you think that is? What would that be considered? An idol. That's idolatry. Right? It's idolatry. So when you worship into this, this God that approves of idolatry at the same time and telling you not to have idols. What do you think you worship? Me? A darn devil. Right? When people look to Buddha or when they look to, you know what I'm saying, all these Hindu gods and they, you know what I'm saying, make sacrifices to them. Or the Yaruba, right? You ever heard of the Yaruba? You know what I'm saying? The Yaruba people. You know what I'm saying? Aruba. No, these are the people, these are people. Right? Yaruba. Right? The Yaruba, right? They 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 go into uh they go into uh, to Cuba and other places, right? But they came from us. These are people, Hebrews, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They took our religion, mixed it with some of these African religion, and they made a new religion out of it. You know what I'm saying? And they sacrificed it. That's the stuff. You know, I've been listening to, uh, I've been listening to uh, Jay-Z stuff. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z and Jay Electronica. Yeah. And I'm listening, you know what I'm saying? I like, the, I like lyrics. I get to breaking it down. So I'm listening to it. And I'm like, oh, y'all talking about all types of stuff. But crazy if Farrakhan don't even go for the stuff they be talking about. 
know what I'm saying? They got Farrakhan all over it, talking about, oh, yeah, we follow Farrakhan. I'm looking like, maybe he do behind closed door, but I'm like, Farrakhan ain't even this wild. They talking about, they talking about Yaruba, they talking about all types of gods and all types. I'm looking like, oh, yeah, y'all just different. Y'all just on some, y'all just all, y'all just out there, just do whatever you don't want to do, right? But if you look at it, what do you think these people are worshiping? Devils. Right? The Greek gods, the Egyptian gods, right? The Egyptian gods, you know what I'm saying, gave birth to the Greek gods, but gave birth to the Roman gods, Roman gods, right? All that. Devils. Right? They're devils. Keep going, watch this. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. I'm going to worship a god that came newly up. How you gonna tell me you just came out 2020 and you gonna tell me you created the world? That type of stuff, I just don't understand. I don't get it. I just don't get how you can get to get to telling me, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying, Muhammad come out and he gets to talking about, oh yeah, well you know what? You know what I'm saying? Allah. This is the true Allah. Like, boy, you just popped up. <laughs> nah, 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 let me tell you. See, it connect all the way back to Abraham. So now you got to tell me all these prophets that came out there that was never talking about what you talking about, they was either valid or invalid. You can't have it both ways. You know what they try to do? Have it both ways. Now they was valid, but no, we ain't got no buts. You know what I'm saying? Sit your butt down. That's what I got for you. Keep going. Let me see. How you just say that Allah is and never word for God? Mm-hmm. That's what it means. That's how you say God in Arabic. You know what I'm saying? You speak Arabic, then you say Allah. All right? But the most high God, so this is the problem with that, right? It makes sense. Allah is God. Like, so if I if I was a person that spoke Arabic, you know what I'm saying, from one of the Arabic speaking countries, and just said Allah, Allah, I could be talking about the book. They could worship the same God that we worship, right? Here's the problem. When you're talking to people who don't speak Arabic and they get to saying Allah, you gotta ask, you gotta think, why in the world would you go speak? Arabic to, to worship God when you speak English and you can just say God or the original language that God was presented to us in was Hebrew so I mean if you wanted to if you wanted to just like let me speak a little a language that's closer to the truth then you would call the man Elohim right I mean that didn't make logical sense I wouldn't call him Allah because that's Arabic and I don't speak Arabic and I ain't got nothing to do with his language the people that he chose spoke a language in this Hebrew. So if I'm going to connect to the people and I'm going to connect to the way that the Most High God was presented to us, I mean, I'm going to call the man Elohim if I'm going to do it. Or I'm just going to call him God. Right? That's how you make the difference. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people will come with that. A lot of people will try to tell us that, well, Allah is just another thing. Yeah, I know. I ain't saying that. I ain't saying it ain't. But why are you speaking Arabic? That just don't make sense to me. Right? That's how you separate it. You separate people intent. They try to hit you with some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Technically, it's true. Now we ain't got time for that stuff. You can't confuse me. Right. right? You talking about Yahuwah or are you talking about yeah. Yeah. Period. You know what I'm saying? Praise the name of Allah. What's his name? You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about what his name is. What Islam tell you his name was? They ain't gonna be able to answer the question. Well, uh, he has many names. Yeah, okay. Yep, <laughs> get your butt out of here. What else we got? Of the rock that begot you, you are unmindful, uh -huh. and a forgotten God that formed you. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw it, he hated them because of the provoking of his sons mm -hmm. and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Okay. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. He said, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Mm. He said, they have moved me to jealousy with that what? Which is not God. With devils. Right? God got jealous because we sacrificing the devils. We got crosses on our darn neck. Look at the darn white Jesus is coming down. We got mamas and, and uncles and, and loved ones that are tell us, we, we, we must got a devil. If we tell them, nah, Jesus wasn't really white like that. That stuff don't even matter. It matter when you put the picture up, though. You know what I'm saying? It mattered to somebody when you walked in the store and you bought that picture. You know what I'm saying? It mattered to somebody that you didn't see a Japanese one, a black... I mean, if it didn't matter, you you know how these people produce stuff. Right? Shoes. What, what, what's your favorite shoe right now? You know what I'm saying? What kind of shoe? If, you, if I told you, let's go get a shoe right now, 
You know what I'm saying? What would you choose? Jordan, I know. What kind? Like, which one? Any Jordan? The 11s. The 11s? Okay. And how many colors do the 11s come in? A lot of colors, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. And like when you get the 11s, like you only want one color or you might want multiple colors? Yeah. You only want one? Which one you would want? The 11s. What about some of your friends? You got any friends that like the 11s? No. No? You like the 11s? The Jordan Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, one, which one would you, what color would you get? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I work. You go to it, they give you options. You walk in there and be like, I like that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know why? Color don't matter. As far as they're concerned, color don't darn matter. It's about the shoe. It's about the design of the shoe. I like the 11. Some people gonna like red. Some people gonna like the darn Space Jam. Right? Some people gonna like blue. Adam, I think he like the black ones. My cousin. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody gonna like something different. You know what we gonna do because everybody, because like, it don't matter. You know what we gonna do? We gonna give them all the darn color. Right? We gonna drop these things every darn year or every so often in a different darn color. So that anybody who like this color, they can come get it this time. Right? You can do that when you're shopping for shoes. Why well, can't do that when I'm shopping for my idol Jesus? Hmm. I mean, when I walk, why I can't walk into the Christian bookstore? And just look on the wall and just be like, no, I got I got two black ones and a Japanese one, but let me let me check out that Hawaiian one. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me see if you break that down for you. You got any of those in the back? Why I can't do that? Because to somebody, I don't know who, Tanner. I don't know who. But it matters to somebody. To somebody, it's very important that let me only show them. If you go to Mexico right now, right this moment, right? And look at the pictures of Jesus that they got. I guarantee you they don't look like the pictures of Jesus that's here in America. You can get you a Mexican Jesus. These Mexicans ain't playing with him. Like, that don't make no sense. I have no American looking Jesus. We definitely going to get you the Maria Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. It don't make sense. Jesus de Cristo. <laughs> that's how you do it. I wouldn't give you nothing else. Right? But when we get to telling them. Nah, and we give them a fact. We look like, nah, I mean, like, obviously, that's, the man, the man was clearly not, I mean, we know that's not him, right? You know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no scenario in the world where that's him. Right. Man would have stuck out like a sore darn thumb. Give me a, give me a, give me a, uh, give me a, uh, Isaiah chapter 53, give me verse 1. Let's start at the beginning of it. Matthew 3? Huh? Matthew? Isaiah. Now, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, give me verse 1. Man would have stuck out like a sore thumb. This is Isaiah chapter 53, verse uh, 1. Who has believed our report? He said, who believed our report? And who, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Mm -hmm. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. Mm -hmm. He has no form nor comeliness. He has what? No form nor comeliness. Uh-huh. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Uh-huh. He is despised and rejected of men mm -hmm. and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely so tell me that if you got the only darn Mexican walking around Israel with a whole bunch of Hebrew, a whole bunch of dark-skinned people, he the only darn Mexican, ain't no other one like him. Are you telling me he don't have a form that we would desire him? You telling me that we wouldn't read that last verse again that we just read? as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not you tell me there would be no esteem for this one this one person you the only one like him I mean it ain't no scenario in the world the man was a darn Mexican that don't make no sense
He wasn't no darn, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't no redneck. They got him on there. Got the darn blush cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Looking like this. You know, they always got their hands like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what in the world? Wait, wait, wait. No, the one that's like, he be like. I get it. That, yeah, yeah. He be like this. He always to the side, though. I don't know what's wrong. You know what I'm saying? I be looking like, what in the world? Are you like super sad looking? No evidence or anything. No evidence, nothing to support. I'm just trying to figure out why would you even want your Jesus to have this Down syndrome? That thing don't even make sense. He was like, he was like, head up. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you look at these people, that makes sense to them. It's no problem, because they we've been conditioned. That's all we've been shown. Now, we get uncomfortable if something else is shown to us. It's like, oh, no, I don't want to get into that. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. I just take it. No, no, no. I just take the white Jesus. I'm giving you facts, though. I'm giving you, I mean, my stuff, forget facts. I'm giving you logic. I don't even got to show you nothing. You know it ain't no situation in the world where this white Mexican man is going through. That don't make sense. They ain't even had combs back there. Why is hair good like that? And in a, in a nation where you're surrounded by, like, Africans and Canaanites and dark... Arabs and all this stuff. You got all different... Te- at the, I mean, the best you can do is make them an Arab. But how did he end up wrong? I would accept like- it. I didn't know we was Hebrews and you just pop up with an Arab Jesus. I'll be like, eh, right? I mean, yeah, it makes Maybe. sense. You know what I'm saying? The way the, the way the world built right now it would make sense. Now, all these Arabs wasn't over there either. You know, that's the secret of black people. All these Arabs wasn't over there. I mean, they are over there now. It was still black folk. No, nah, like where, where, where Iraq is and all of those nations. Hebrew. Those, those, well, not Hebrew, but black folk. Yeah, those dark skinned nations. Like the Persians. Persians was black. The Elamites was black. Like yeah, all those Elamites. nations. The Sidonians, the Levin, like Lebanon. The Elamites are the Indian now. Yeah, they was all dark. Right? And guess how India, how they, how they built their system. The dark-skinned Indians, they still there. Dark-skinned people in India, they call them, the, they call they, they got what's called a caste system. A caste system is like classes, right? We got like low class and, we got like low class and, you know what I'm saying, high class and all that. So they have caste, C-A, C-A-S-T, you know what I'm saying? So they have caste systems. So the bottom caste are the black ones, right? So they still there, they know. You know what I'm saying? And they different people, two totally different people, and they know it. Because some of the people ain't really from there. Like, well, they they from there, but some of the people, you know what I'm saying, they, they know. So when all these black people start getting start getting chased out of the land, they stayed, but they're like, well, we like, you know what I'm saying? You black. The rest of y'all got chased out, the ones that are black. So you go, but get your butt at the bottom. Right? That's how I go. That's how. That's all, all this stuff they tell you today. If you read it up, you know what I'm saying. Like an Indian, like you know what I'm saying. India person from India watch this, you know what I'm saying, and they saw what I said just now. They try to be like, it has nothing to do with race or our color of skin. And they have nothing to do with color of skin. It's just a family. Oh, it's just family. It's very coincidental that in every nation, just the family. darkest people are always the poorest. <laughs> just family. That's our fault too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because these people can't identify us otherwise. You know what I'm saying? So they just, the way they look at it is like, we don't know which one of these folks the Hebrews. Nah, no, forget it. You know what I'm saying? Just do them all. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to get it. That's our fault. They can blame us. We apologize. You know what I'm saying? On behalf of the Hebrew nation, you know what I'm saying? We apologize to all these other dark skin races because y'all ain't got nothing to do with half of these fights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all ain't got, these, people come, these people come from Africa, come over here trying to get the American dream and get pulled over by cops. <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do with our, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got nothing to do with this. They sitting there like, what is this? What did I do? And get shot up by a darn cop. <laughs> that's out of line. That, that's out of line. Like, I apologize because you ain't got nothing to do with this. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't even come get you. Your people sold us. You know what I'm talking about? They wouldn't even, they ain't had nothing to do with you to get shot by no cop. But on the other hand, they get to go to Harvard and stuff, though. Well, no, nah, I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. That's how it's supposed to be for them. That curse ain't on their butt. You know what I'm saying? They end up getting caught. They supposed to be able to do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? They get caught up in our curses. You know what I'm saying? They just get caught up in that. That thing ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? They curse gonna come later. You know what I'm saying? Now they gotta double up. I get a little slice of your curse, and I'm still gonna get the one that God got for me at the end for selling selling the people out. Right? All right. Let's see. Let's keep going. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Smitten of God and, and afflicted. But mm-hmm. well, he was wounded for our transgression. He was what? Wounded for our transgression. Who is this talking about? Yahushua. Mm. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. So last week we left off where? In Jeremiah. 
Nehemiah. We finished Nehemiah. off Nehemiah, right? So what comes after Nehemiah? We're in the New Testament now. Uh, new. You know what I'm saying? We in the New Testament. Like a 400 year gap. Yeah, buddy. Whole lot of stuff happening. You got the Maccabees. Maybe one day we'll start getting into the Maccabees and all yeah, that. I don't want to confuse the people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. We'll see. But you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? In between that 400 year gap, you know what I'm saying? At the time that we was talking about who was in control, what nation had had the empire? Persians. Persians, right? So the Persians had control. Then after the Persians came the Greeks, right? Daniel told him to grab a... Daniel 9. Is it 9 I'm looking for? Yeah, I think so. Let's try it. Let's see. 9. I don't think it's 9, though. I think uh, probably one Daniel 6 or Daniel 4, maybe. I want to say it's not 5. Could be seven. What you gonna need? Well, nine I'm trying. is the seventy weeks. No, nah, not nine. Eh? I want uh, I want when he lay out the animals. You know what I'm saying? Where he had a vision of the animals. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's is it good. seven? It might be eight. Mm -mm. It ain't eight. It's probably seven. Yeah, it's seven. Give me uh, give me Daniel chapter seven, verse twelve. I'm gonna take a little wild guess. Hopefully that's right. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season in time. Mm -hmm. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Mm -hmm. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. And that no, no, no. Give me Daniel chapter 2. Give me Daniel chapter 2. We could have got it from there too, but it, it, Daniel chapter 2 laid out better. I need about 40, about verse 40 something, maybe 49. Daniel chapter 2, about verse 49, maybe 50 something. I'm looking for where he starts to explain the vision. Should be somewhere in there. No, that's too far down. No, make sure. Daniel 2, 49 is like the end when you're saying, then the king made Daniel a great man. Okay, yeah, it's going to be before that. Maybe 39. He shall arise another kingdom. Yeah, 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 that's what I want. I want the beginning of that. What is it? Behold, the great. Uh, you want thirty-one. All right, this is, this is Daniel, chapter two, verse thirty-one. Watch what the book say. Thou, O king, saw and behold a great image, the great image whose brightness was excellent. So Daniel, Daniel is talking about the the king, uh, the 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 king Nebuchadnezzar, right? Lucifer, right? That's who Lucifer is. He's talking about the king, right? And he saw an image, and it's, it's sort of like an idol, like a big old statue, right? It's kind of how, how it's depicted to it, right? And then on that statue, there's multiple levels to it and multiple materials made out of it, right? At the top, very top, it was gold. And so now, he's about to explain, Daniel's about to explain this dream to Nebuchadnezzar. We talked about some of this already, right? Watch this. Now, O king, saw and behold a great image, the great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and mm -hmm. the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. So gold, silver, brass. His legs of iron, and his feet was iron, iron and part clay. And his feet was iron and clay, right? So now he's about to explain what all of this means, because these visions, again, it's God painting the picture so we can compare it to something else, right? Watch this. You saw till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. Mm -hmm. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together mm -hmm. and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. Mm -hmm. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. Mm -hmm. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. All right, so this is what I wanted right here. This is where he started to explain it, right? Watch this. And we will tell the interpretation before the king. Uh huh. You, O king, are a king of kings, and the God of heaven and has given you a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Mm -hmm. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven has he given into your hand, uh -huh. and have made you ruler over them all. Okay. You are this head of gold. Mm. So Nebuchadnezzar was a king of what? King of kings. But what nation? Babylon. Babylon, right? So the gold represents Babylon, right? Watch this. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Uh huh. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things, 
And as iron breaks all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And where you saw the feet of and the toes, part of potter's clay and part iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou saw the iron mixed with miry clay. Right? So here we look at the 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 the, uh, the different kingdoms and in, in that they come next and whatever comes after that and one comes after that, right? But it didn't give us names. I forgot that it didn't give us the names here. So now we're gonna have to go back and grab the name. But we know just from our history who came after uh, Nebuchadnezzar based off of the, the history that we read. The Persians and the Medes. Right? You remember Nebuchadnezzar had a son. Daniel was locked up with the son, right? The son had the writing on the wall. And then Daniel explained that to him. And then that very night, Right? The Medes came and took over. So that was that inferior nation that came next. The Medes. Right? Then after that, the Persians came. Because that's, that's where we are now. Nehemiah. Right? Remember the Persians came after that. It was King Darius, I believe. Or uh, Xerxes. Right? Darius and then Xerxes. Yeah, right. Xerxes was the one where it ended. Right? So then Xerxes had, you know what I'm saying? He had the rule. So you have Babylon, Medes, Persians. Right? We got to figure out who come after that, though. Right? Grab, uh... Maybe Daniel 6. Scan through Daniel 6, see if it tell me about the Grecians. Oh. Scan through Daniel 6. Scan through Daniel 6. See if it tell me about the Grecians. You know what I'm saying? She has to have two goats. Yeah, she has to have two goats. When they're talking to me about two goats, that's the one I want. It might be seven. You know what I'm saying? It might have been seven. We were just in seven, so it could be seven. But... She explained to me about two goats. Or maybe it ain't two goats. Maybe it's a goat versus something else. But I want to... I wanna Eight talk. is the ram and a goat. A ram and a goat? Yeah, maybe that's what I want. Eight is the ram and a goat? Mm -hmm. Is it the beginning? Never saw the median Persian. Hold on. I'm almost thick on that. Yeah, if it's a goat though, I think I don't think I don't think nothing else referred to a goat. So that must be what I'm looking for. Let me see, I'm gonna go ahead and cheat. Alright, so give me Daniel chapter uh 8 verse, uh, give me Daniel chapter 8, give me verse 15. Give me verse 16. Daniel chapter 8, verse 16. It's Daniel chapter 8, verse 16. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli. Mm -hmm. Which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Right? So he had a vision, and now Gabriel is about to explain that vision to him. Watch this. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Mm -hmm. He said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Right? Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but mm -hmm. he touched me and set me upright. Mm -hmm. And he said, Behold, I will make you know what shall be in the last end of the indign indignation. Mm -hmm. for, all, for at the time appointed, the end shall be. Mm -hmm. The ram which you saw having two horns are the kings of the Medes and Persians. Right? So you have the Medes and Persians, right? We already know that Babylon, then what happens next? The Medes and then the Persians. Right? Because that's our history. We, we looked at that. We watched that when we read. That's the order that it went in. Okay, so after the Medes and Persians, let's see what happened next. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. So Greece comes after that. Right? So now when we look, Medes and Persians, we got Persians, Xerxes, Nehemiah. Then we have this gap for 400 years. Right? In this gap for 400 years, we end up with Greece. That's who was ruling us during this time period. Also during this time period, the Romans came and they took control. So after Greece, there was iron, right? So the iron was the very bottom and then you had a clay mixed with iron. It would seem like the Romans is the same people as the Greeks. No, they're different people. Yeah, no, but it just seemed like they so yeah, they, Romans got everything from Greece. They got a lot. Yeah, they got a lot from them for sure. Um, but you look at it, 
The Romans came next and they took control, right? Once they took control, that's where the book starts, right? Or they've been in control for a little bit, but that's where the book starts for the New Testament, right? So just, I just want to make sure we understand the stage. We, it was this period that we were ruled by a whole other people. There was a whole lot of drama, a whole lot of stuff that went on, a lot of rebellions, a lot of different things. The Romans came, tried to take it all over and settle some of that madness down, right? But we still have a struggle with the Romans because we have some of the same problems that we had with the Greeks, right? They don't respect our religion. Now, the Romans are a lot more open-minded, all right? The Romans kind of like, y'all do whatever y'all do over there. We ain't got nothing to do with it. Y'all just don't cause no problems. And that's kind of how the Romans managed things. So it kept things a little bit better. The Greeks were a little more provocative, right? They wanted to tell us how we could do it. They disrespected our sacrifices, disrespected our temple, all types of stuff. All right? So that's what we'll get into. Let's grab Luke chapter 1, verse 1. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 1. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, mm -hmm. even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, mm -hmm. it seemed good to me also, having the perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto you in order... Most excellent Theophilus, mm -hmm. that you might know the certainty of those things wherein you have been instructed. All right? So the writer of the book of Luke is trying to explain to us. He's like, yo, you know what I'm saying? There's a few people that wrote some gospels, right? That's basically what he's saying. There's some other people that wrote some gospels. You know what I'm saying? You got Matthew. He wrote the gospels, and he was there pretty much from the beginning, right? Then you also got John. He wrote a gospel, and he was there pretty much from the beginning, Right? And then Luke said, you know what I'm saying, I'm popping on this. He got Mark, you know what I'm saying, he was there pretty much from the, he said, now Luke, he was like, man, I have perfect understanding of all these things. So I think it's fitting for me to write this to you just so you know for sure, right? I want you to know for sure the stuff that we be talking about is real, right? So that's, that's how he opened it up. And what we're about to read is him kind of giving us a detail of the life of Yahushua or how things kind of came about. Let's see where he starts. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zechariah mm -hmm. of the course. Of the days of Herod. Herod was the one who was appointed the ruler over the, the Hebrew people, over the Israelites. Right? So the Romans appointed Herod to be that ruler, to manage it. Right? Make sure that we manage, make sure we good. Make sure they don't cause no issues. Right? Because we got a reputation. All right? Keep going. A certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, mm -hmm. and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in they all... They were both what? Righteous before God. Now, the book say no man can be righteous, right? That's not what it says. Oh. It says there's no good, no one good. So why do Christians think that? No. Christians think no man can be righteous. How in the world they get it? All right? It's what you go to. And the Christian, no, 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 you can't. So you can't be righteous of your own. Okay? Go to it right here. Right? Not until Jesus come, right? Jesus is the only person that can make you righteous. No, okay. Go to it right here. Just go to it. Man they ain't came on the scene yet. Then you got to force him to say something stupid like, well, see, the thing about Jesus is the lamb, man. He was slaughtered from the foundation of the world. Right? Okay, well, if that's the case, then shut up. We can be righteous then. Been that way the whole time. Either way, the argument, yeah, I agree with you. He was slaughtered from the foundation. You're right. So in that case, we could always be righteous. Keep going. Let's see. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Mm -hmm. 
And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. And just to answer that question that you know, that a Christian or somebody curious might ask, the reason why they could be uh, uh, righteous is based off of the next sentence. He said, because they both walk blameless. So when you're blameless, that doesn't mean that you've never committed sin. Right. All that means is that you, according to our law, are in a state where there's no blame. And our law provides a way for certain sins that you can make up for, right? You can make a sacrifice, you can repent, you can turn away from it, and you're fine. And then also in uh, Ezekiel, it told us, Ezekiel 18, that if you turn away from your sin, he'll forget your sins, and he'll see you as righteous. So he set up. Now, that is truly based off of the framework work that would later come from Yahweh what we're about to read, right? The only reason that the Most High God can make that proclamation at that point is because he know later on, I'm going to send my son to die for your past sins. Right. Otherwise, if it was nothing to make him forget about your past sins, then they would still be there. So he is making that proclamation based off of something that's going to happen later. But it's important for us to understand that. Right. Keep going. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they both were now well stricken in years. All right. So these old folks, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got no children. And let's see what happened next. It came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the time of incense. Mm -hmm. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. All right, so an angel appeared to him while he was doing his duty as a, as a uh, priest. All right, keep going. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fell upon him, mm -hmm. and fear fell upon him. Mm -hmm. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, mm -hmm. for, your bro your, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and you shall call his name John. Mm -hmm. And you shall have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He said, He shall be great in the sight of Yahuwah. Watch this. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. He said, from the mother's womb, the man going to have the Holy Spirit. All right? Don't let him drink no wine or strong drink. All right? Which is customary for a Levite or for a priest. Or for a Nazarite. All right? Or for a Nazarite. All right? I think it's customary. Like, what you mean? You know what I'm saying? We wasn't supposed to be doing that anyway if we had to teach the word. That's crazy. All right, let's see. Keep going. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Mm -hmm. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah. To he turn said he him. shall go in the spirit and the power of who? Elijah. Uh-huh. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Uh-huh. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Okay. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Mm. Hold we got there. Go to Malachi chapter uh, 4. It's Malachi chapter 4, give me verse 1. You know, learn, learn a little bit about John the Baptist. You know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't get to Yahushua if we ain't learn about John the Baptist. Yahushua, we're going to learn later. He called him the greatest born of women. You know what I'm saying? That still gets me. That thing gets me. Like, really? He said he is the man. It's a reason why. You know it's what I'm like, saying? It's like, like better than you're going to see there's a reason why. Watch this. Malachi chapter 4. It hint to it right here why he greater. It's because he's going to do what Moses did, but he's going to do it in the latter days. And that thing is like, for real. Yeah, that boy work ain't done yet. <laughs> said, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, what you said, oh, I'm looking at something. Y'all ain't even looked at yet. He, he said, uh, what did he say? Uh, Jeremiah was like, they ain't going to say when he took him out of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now they going to say He said, no longer would they. You know what I'm saying? No longer would the people say, Yahuwah who, who took him out of Egypt. He said, he going to say, Yahuwah who took him out of all the countries Moses of the world. only took him out of one place. You yeah. know, this dude is going to take him out of everything. Elijah going to be like, listen, everybody, let's move. Meet me in the wilderness. I don't know how he's going to pull it all. He's going to do it, though. Watch this. Start verse 1. Uh, verse 1. This is uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Watch the book say. For behold, the day comes that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Mm-hmm. And the day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Mm -hmm. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with the healing in his wings, and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Mm -hmm. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Watch and this. Remember the law of Moses. He my said, servant. Remember the law of Moses, my servant. Which it's I a reason why he's telling us to remember that. 
Remember Moses, my servant. And what else? Which I commanded you in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Mm -hmm. you so you remember that law that I gave you and uh, that Moses gave you? He was like, remember that. What else? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and great and dreadful day of the Lord. In other words, he's telling us it's cryptic. All these prophecies are cryptic. And it's important that we understand that. That's what we're going to learn. Right? The way that these prophecies are written, kind of put yourself in the position, I read this prophecy, what do I think it means? And then we're going to show you what it means as we go through the book, right? As we go through the, the, the New Testament or go through uh, the Gospels, we're going to show you how Yahushua said this prophecy means this. Or the angel is connecting this prophecy to this. When you do that, you'll see, oh, this thing is, this thing is not as simple as everybody. You mess around and be expecting one thing and get something totally different, Right? So he said, he told them right here, read that part again. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he shall turn the heart of the father. Oh, wait, hold on, go back, go back one. He said, remember, remember my, my servant. Remember the law of Moses, uh -huh. my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right, so first he tells you to remember Moses, and you have to think about it. In that time, Moses delivered us, Right? Moses delivered us. Moses also prepared the way for who came after Moses? Joshua. 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 What's his name? Yahushua. Yahushua. So these are little hints that the book is laying out. If you connect that, right? If you can connect that simple part, okay. He said, remember Moses. And he gave us commandments. Okay. And then after that, Moses, I mean, before that, Moses delivered us. Okay, then after that he told us, okay, and I'm going to send you Elijah. So now your brain got to start going, okay, Elijah going to come. Elijah did this. Elijah did that. And after Elijah, Yahushua came and we went into our promised land. Right? So now when when Zechariah is told that, he going to come as Elijah did, that's what Zechariah's mind got to be going. Right? You got to be able to look at the book. But watch how it played out. He, he shall going. turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. All right. So that's that's the, the quote that, that the angel just quoted to uh, Zechariah. Right. Just imagine just something popping up to you out of nowhere. They ain't got no book. They ain't saying verse one, verse nothing. They ain't saying this is out of out of the book of Malachi. They ain't saying nothing else. They just quote the word. If you don't know the word, how you going to get it? You wouldn't know what the man was talking about if you don't know the word. He just talking to you. That's why it was important. Our people knew the word. Most of a lot of these people get to running their running their mouth talking about you know God he don't call to qualify he qualified to call and while that's not necessarily untrue that sometimes that's presented in a way to say you know most high God just pick any random old anybody that's not the book he not just picking a random person he went he went to Zechariah on purpose because Zechariah knows his book book already told you he is a righteous man and blameless right do it sound like he qualified the call. No, the man went to the man that deserved to be called. He said, you know, I'm going to make something happen in you. You kept my word all these days. You and your darn wife. Not just one of y'all. You and your darn wife. We both, we y'all both just kept the darn word. Okay, you know what? We're going to do something special, man. Right? We're going to make it happen, then. We're going to do something special. They was barren. They thought they weren't going to be able to have no kids. The angel told them, don't even worry about it. Name it, name John when it happened. Don't be scared. Get your butt up. You can name his butt John. Right? We're going to pick up in next week in John chapter 1. All right? We're going to pick up John chapter 1, about verse 15. And we're going we gonna to walk through the life of John. You know what I'm saying? There ain't a whole lot there. You know what I'm saying? But we're going to walk through the life of John and then what his whole life purpose was about. All right? His whole life purpose was about just what the book just said. Clearing the way. All right? Turning the, the hearts of the, the, the children to the fathers, right? Getting us back to the basics. Trying to let us know, yo, this is where we come from. This is where it is. We're going to learn something about Elijah later on. Not next week, but later on, we're going to learn that Elijah, who is also John the Baptist, right? Who is also Elijah from the Old Testament that we already read, right? This man is going to come back again in the end times. Will he be called Elijah just like John the Baptist wasn't called Elijah? Right? He just came in the spirit of Elijah. Will in the end times will his name be Elijah? Who knows? Man might pop up next week. Right? We don't know. 
right? However it play out, though, we just have to have our eyes open to be able to take it. The most I got is rarely going to give it to us just as, a, you know, just flat out, right? It's cryptic. We have to understand these prophecies. We have to understand what's going on. We have to decode it. The only way to do that is to know the book, be comfortable with it, know the repetitions. Same thing happens over and over again. That's how the most I got play it out. That's how you know. That's how you, that, that, that's the code that he lay out for us, right? This happens over and over. There's a consistency. Once you see that consistency, it's like, okay, I can trust that. I got witnesses. All right, any questions? All right, let's pray out.